stopping the government from stopping Arizona and its new immigration law. Republican Senators Jim Nemint of South Carolina and David Vitter of Louisiana introducing an amendment this week to prohibit federal funding of any lawsuit that tries to block Arizona's immigration law. It would essentially pull the plug on the government's case. But there may be another motive for putting this amendment up for a vote. And joining me now is one of the co-authors, Louisiana Senator David Vetter. Senator, thank you so much for being here. So what exactly sure, is it that you your amendment do does? It does exactly what you said. It would stop funding for the federal government, the Obama administration, to be able to try to stop the Arizona law in court. Right now, the only real immigration action that the Obama administration seems to be interested in is blocking the Arizona law. I think we should be real active from the federal government, but about border security, about workplace security, about all the things we should have been doing in the last 30 years that I've pushed for with many others. Instead, the Obama administration is, is focusing on simply blocking the Arizona law. But is this a political stunt or could it actually be done? I mean, how would it work? What can absolutely be done, we consider what are called funding limitation amendments all the time. They simply say, no taxpayer funds shall be used for this, shall be used for that. If this were to pass into law, and I think we're getting great support, if it were to pass into law, the Obama administration could not legally challenge this Arizona law. The thing that's so interesting about this is that obviously President Obama is determined to challenge the law, but the polls continue to show that the majority of Americans are with you on this. They, they are in favor of the law. So if you manage to get this thing to a vote, the lawmakers on Capitol Hill are going to have to ask themselves a question, whether they side with President Obama on this or whether they side with what could be the majority of their constituents on this. However, well, that's a big if. How do you, in the minority, get a vote on this amendment? Well, I'm very hopeful we're going to get a vote next week. Uh, but we're working toward that. There are various procedural ways we can try to ensure that, so I'm very hopeful we're going to do that. Uh, but you're exactly right. The great majority of the American people want the federal government to act, but to act with enforcement, to act on border security, to act on workplace security, not to simply block Arizona from doing what they were really forced to do by circumstances because of federal inaction over decades. But now, the, you know, the, they're not going to want, you know, they, you obviously don't control the Senate, and the Democrats do. Right. And Harry Reid is not, not going to want to vote on this, I assume, right? No. I mean, so it's pretty easy no, usually for the... them to shut down amendments. Do you, have, do you actually think you have a chance of getting this one voted on? Yes, I do, and I can't go into the details, but um, I do think we have a great chance of getting a floor vote. The Senate, at least compared to the U.S. House, is a very open place where if you read the rules carefully, use them any way you legally can, you can often force a vote. I've done that on many other issues, so is Jim. We're working on this. All right, so let's say you get a vote. And, you know, is it possible that you could actually get this thing through? Because, as I say, this might not come down to a party line vote, given the polling of the American people on this issue. Well, I think once we have a vote, uh, people really need to understand how uh, Americans feel about it and how their constituents feel about it. And I believe this discussion will build toward this vote uh, the coming week. So I encourage everybody out there to feel strongly to contact your senator to, to let them, uh, to explain to them how you want them to vote. You know, we've, we've, we've seen, obviously, the Department of Justice come out against this law. We saw Eric Holder say that if this challenge fails, then he's going to prepare yet another challenge claiming that it's uh, discriminatory, that it violates the Equal Protection Clause. Uh, they seem, uh, within the Department of Justice, very determined to go after this law no matter what. Do you think a vote like this can stop them? I think it's very useful to explain with a vote like this, how the American people feel. And Megan, it's just a shame that they didn't bring that same passion. They're not bringing that same focus and energy to actually solving the illegal immigration problem. If they had worked on the problem over two years, enforcement, border security, workplace security, with this level of intensity and passion and focus, would be in a much better place today. And Senator Vitter, I, I have to ask you before I let you go, as a senator from Louisiana, uh, to your reaction to the, the news now that BP has capped this well for now, that they're testing it. And, uh, you know, that's some good news out of the Gulf. Where, where do you put some perspective on it for us? Well, it's a long time in coming, as we all know. Uh, this flow has been going on for way longer than any of us would have predicted at the beginning. 
and it's so much oil, it's like a major new oil spill every day. So this news yesterday was great news. We're just taking it a day at a time, keeping our fingers crossed, praying that the pressure tests will suggest that it is completely capped for good. We still have a lot of work to do with cleanup, environmental mitigation, also the economic da damage, including that caused by the moratorium. But if this holds, it'll really be turning the corner in a, in a really important way. Now we're watching it. All right, Senator, all the best to you. Thanks so much for being here.